that this series that we start on today is simply entitled Breathe Again. God, will you help me breathe again? Breathe again. I would that you would share with me for a few moments in Genesis chapter 2, the book of beginnings. It is Moses' narration of the creation story of how God created everything through his own thought. Is it okay that I talk about God today? Pastor, you always talk about God. Sometimes we, you know, we, we, we talk more about what you're going through and how you feel than really evangelizing to you about the strength of who God is. If, 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 you, if you knew that you had an elder brother who stood behind you who could conquer anything in front of you, you wouldn't have any present fear. And so we must learn that it is God whom we are missing. As the psalmist would say to us that he is my buckler and my shield, my fortress. How we identify with God and how we identify God will either help us to identify our particular responsibilities to him and to one another on earth. Amen. Come on, share with me Genesis chapter 2, just one verse, just one verse today. There's one verse. It says in a New Living Translation, it says, Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground. God breathed the breath of life into man's nostrils. And the man became a living person. God breathed the life, the Ruach, the spirit in the Hebrew, Ruach. God breathed the spirit of breath into the nostrils of man. Generically speaking, Adam, the human one, the one born from the earth, the man and captures both male and female. The Adam, the creation of God. And man became a living soul. Amen. You may be seated. Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground, breathed the breath of life into the nostrils of man. And man woke up, and man became a living being. I want to share today with you, um, from whatever subject you deem to select, but my focus really is about God and how God has breathed into us the essence of that which sustains us. Some years ago, perhaps 15 to 20 years ago, I witnessed one of our members by the name of Vincent Epps, Epps, one who had great oratory and acting ability. He stood here in our congregation celebrating what many of us have called the Black History Month in February. He performed a play or a skit or a poem by James Weldon Johnson. James Weldon Johnson, a 19th century literary poet, captures the essence of Moses' understanding of the creation that God himself created. It's entitled, The Creation. And this particular poem originated during the Harlem Renaissance, an intellectual process or period 
a cultural revival in America where many African Americans learn new ways of expressing themselves and part of their freedom. Here, some of the words that James Weldon Johnson shared with the world as he considered the writings of Moses, the creation. And part of this particular writing, he says, then God sat down. <laughs> then God sat down on the side of a hill where he could think. By a deep wide river, he sat down. With his head in his hands, God thought and thought. Till he thought, I'll make me a man. Up from the bed of the river, God scooped the clay. And by the bank of the river, he kneeled him down. And there the great God Almighty, who lit the sun and fixed it in the sky, who flung the stars to the most far corners of the night, who rounded the earth in the middle of his hand, this great God, like a mammy bending her over her baby, kneeled down in the dust, toiling over a lump of clay till he shaped it in his own image. Then into he blew the breath of life and man became a living soul. Amen and amen. These words of James Warden Johnson simply reiterate the writings of Moses in Genesis as Moses hears God informing from and being informed from God about how God and how things were created. In essence, if you read Genesis, the bottom line that Moses is trying to convey to us is that God did everything. God did everything. Because now we are present in 2021, having realized from Genesis, the depiction of God, that God is omnipotent, or powerful, that God is all-knowing, omniscient, God God is everywhere at the same time, never short of his power. We've learned in our communities, our society, that God created everything, but yet we somehow sought after much more pleasure within self than with God. I, I don't know. I'm just going to talk today from my heart as I did last week. And you got to pray with me. If you don't pray with me, I'm going to still preach and teach. It's okay. Because I want you to know that you are the manifestation of God's vision. God, listen, God, this great anthropological engineer, sculpted and made you into, a ver into the very image of himself. Not physically, but in potential of thought and being. The word of God says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are made to be, listen, to be in relationship, to experience the infinite presence, power, and promises of God. We must consider and understand that we are not nor ever should be the constructs of our own imagination. For if we do, then we restrict ourselves to only being influenced by that which created, that which is created, and not through the creator. Oh, okay, y'all just missed it. Let me just say it this way. That if we simply make our lives out of our own imagination, then we are limiting, restricting ourselves based upon limited power and information. And I caution you and I caution people not simply to have to think positively, but to think biblically and spiritually. Y'all help me, okay? Because, because if you just think positively, you will draw from a well that's already dry. If, 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 if I were to live my life as I did before the 
second revelation of God where I truly understood salvation, then I would have been less than what God created me to be because man apart from God is always half of what God thought about. Okay, it's going to be, okay, okay. We are never or should never think that we ourselves can create a better life for ourselves than the one who created us can do. We bear, listen, we bear the fingerprints of a divine God. We are more than the content of our physical composition. Yes, we are made of clay, and one day a pastor will stand over our physical remains and declare these words, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, and earth to earth. But we are not just untamed animals trying to survive by conquering everything that threatens our well-being or fulfilling our lives through our own sensual pleasures. I want you to hear me today. God, God has been on me all week long with this particular word. I just hope that my presentation of it does God some sense of justice and some sense of glory because I really want you to leave this place knowing God and knowing how God has loved you into creation. The Bible says that we are the works of God's own hands and God's own thoughts. And if you see yourself as the work of God's hands and the work of God's thoughts, then no matter what mama or daddy did or did not do, you see your being and your essence and your future and the curse breaking and the promise believing, you see yourself living above and not beneath. If you only see yourself from mama and daddy's picture of who you are, then you see yourself as being the tail and not the head. Y'all help me, Ephesians chapter 2. Y'all help me pray pray for me. Ephesians chapter 2 says in 10, verse 10 says, For we are God's workmanship. <laughs> Listen, we are, I'm going to slow down. We are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. You got to get this, y'all come. You are created in Christ Jesus. God created the powerful Christ Jesus and then the word of God says that you are created in Christ, which means that no matter what limits people put on your life because you are in Christ, whoo, You can now say, as Philippians says, I can now do all things through him because I am in him. You can't do things through him unless you are in him. And you can't get all the benefits of God if you are not in him and God is working through you. God, yeah. I know it rains on the just as well as the unjust. I know the sun shines on the just as well as the unjust, but there are some things that are reserved for the believer, those who walk in favor of God, that others will never, ever be a part of. You are in Christ because God has made you and we are his workmanship. Created to do good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. I love what Psalm 139 14 says. It says, I will praise you, O God, for I or we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. If you can't imagine God's work being marvelous, then you will never depend on God's working in your life because his work is not marvelous. But when you recognize that he is marvelous, it is easier to depend upon what he says. And y'all, okay. Because now you recognize how in the world can I turn away from someone so marvelous? inside and out. 
I, I love this word because it, Moses helps us to rec recognize even through the writings of James Ward and Johnson, they help us to realize that you are a carrier of the very life of God. That's why God tells us, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Why? Because you, say me, say me, say me, say me, say me, say me, say me. You may not have the ecclesiastical title, but you got the position. Y'all got to... Here it is, because now, because now you must understand you are a carrier of the very life of God. The fact that you are alive means that you have his breath in your lungs. That breath that you breathe is the breath that God breathed in Adam in Genesis chapter 2. You are alive because God still, say still has a plan for your life. Oh, help me, Lord Jesus. He is not finished with you yet. So embrace God and embrace the change that needs to occur for you to become not just a man, but a God man. Not just a woman, but a God woman. I hope you pray with me today because there's a lot that God wants to share today and I'm just going to be obedient to him. God breathes into the dust. He gathered the particles that he created. He took the dirt that was trampled upon. He took the dirt, the soil, and God blessed his creation with what we call humanity. And after God created man from the dust of the earth, he then turned again and made an environment for man to thrive in. But because God made man like he was, free will, that which he made for man to exist in and to thrive in and the environment that God made Adam in to told Adam to keep, to make sure you multiply the earth, we find now that Adam, Adam found a way to abuse what God gave. Now I'm jumping a little ahead and I'm going to come back. We can't blame Eve for the responsibility God gave Adam. And one of the reasons that our society is so messed up is that we've gotten our roles mixed up. Okay, y'all. <laughs> Here it is. Y'all got to pray with me. Y'all got to help me. Help me. Adam said, the woman you gave me messed me up. I'm going to come back to Genesis 2, but the, the woman you gave me messed me up. But God, God, but, but Adam, I gave this commandment to you that you would multiply that you would never nurture everything that I've given in your life it doesn't make the woman weaker it just makes her different y'all ain't y'all <laughs> No, no, no. It doesn't make her inferior. It doesn't make her less than because the same breath God breathed in Adam the man he also breathed in Adam the woman that we call Eve Okay, let me, let me jump back. Here it is. God breathed into them the dust and God scoped it. The garden was full of trees. They had two purposes for beauty and for bounty. To, to, to give shade and to give food. And throughout the creation narrative, God blesses us. He blesses the world. Until man then sees other opportunities to fulfill their own lusts and passions. Life produces life but if there is an airway obstruction which means something is blocking the free flowing air from moving in and out of my lungs if your airways are blocked then it will cause you at some moments to gag for air and what we see in our society now is people gagging to breathe 
And I don't just mean from police brutality to George Floyd's. I don't just mean those individuals who have gone through death. But I mean these words I can't breathe are words that many are echoing in the church. This is not just an anthropological understanding. I can't breathe. It is not just a bi biological exercise. It is a theological construct that many of our airways are blocked off and we can't breathe the freedom that God put in us and we find ourselves trapped in the, in the sin of the world and we can't find freedom because we are so comfortable in enslavement. Okay, this is too much. I know this is just, this is on a Sunday morning, y'all. We, 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 we're in the church. We are living in our communities and, and, and we think that we are breathing, but you're not breathing when you minimize the gift that God has given. Y'all, 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 help me, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. These verses, this verse points to God's heart as the observant, compassionate one, it says that God says that even though I am self-sufficient, I don't want to enjoy this stuff by myself. God made us. And the word of God says that God scooped us and he breathed into us the breath of life and the corpse became a living soul. Y'all gotta help me. Your biological parents can contribute much to your success and your demise. Somebody ought to say amen. But it is God that completes you. I don't know. Yesterday, y'all didn't, didn't get that. So somebody should have been more clapping on that. It is God who completes you. Acts 17, 28 says, for in him we live, we move, and we exist. As some of our own poets have said, we are God's offspring. And even though Eric Garner said, I can't breathe because of a biological restriction to his airway, those of us who also know God in moments of our existence should say the same thing. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Because there is an obstruction between the blessings of God and the obedience to God. We want to be blessed, but we don't want to be obedient. We want to have favor, but we don't want to sacrifice. We want a new house, but we don't want to be good stewards. We want to ride in style, but have no moral class. I can't breathe. It's not just a biological expression. It is a theological phenomenon. We are snuffing out what God originally put in us. And that's why my, my whole mind set of changed because I've always wanted to do more teaching than getting you to shout and dance and then leave still void of strength. We want you to shout and dance, but we don't want you to keep leaving void of transformation. We are snuffing out what God originally put in us. Everything you Everything you, everything about you that someone does to you can either be a blessing or a lesson or a curse. The ability to breathe is something that is necessary if you are going to have a quality of life. Stay with me, church. You, in essence, if you are blocking someone's breathing, you assassinate their dreams, causing an interruption in the airways of their existence. You, in essence, are complicit to making them a corpse. When you are a silent observer of oppression in any form, you are guilty of asphyxiation. Asphyxiation is the ability to cut off someone's livelihood and cut off someone's thirst for 
your life because now you are choking the very life out of them by causing a restriction in their airway. I mean, y'all, okay, when you, are, when you are honored to parent, when you are blessed to parent, when you are honored to, honored to parent or influence those that are dependent upon you for love, support, discipline, and morality, but you are too busy chasing your infatuations, then you become a contributing partner to their delinquency and you, are, in essence, restrict their breathing. If you lay down to have a baby and enjoy sex, you can hang out all night long and let grandma raise your baby who is out of touch with our current reality just so you can have some fun. Baby, if you had fun while you were down, I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all gonna get mad at me. I, I no, y'all don't get mad at me. I'm just, I'm just saying we gotta stop this stuff. We got, it, it's a good feeling. I know it's a good feeling to, to have to make love and all that stuff. Whatever y'all cut, some of y'all cut. What y'all, some of y'all doing ain't making love no way. <laughs> what some of y'all doing ain't making love? Next, stop, stop saying I'm making love. They ain't making love. It's just sex. Sex is void of inter spirit connectivity. Okay, yo, I, I leave it alone. Y'all ain't ready, y'all. I leave it alone. I leave it alone. I leave it alone. But notice what I said when you are honored to parent or influence and you do not give them what is necessary needed. Listen, we're living in a world. And, and, and we, you hear it, I hear it. We, we hear about crime. We hear about what we're doing. I mean, you, I mean, you can television and, and you can see it on TikTok. They put it everywhere. They put it on Instagram, how they ride by, just shoot out. I mean, it, everybody got a cell phone. I don't know why y'all think y'all can do stuff and nobody's going to capture it. There's a camera everywhere. <laughs> I know. Everywhere. But we, how do we handle, how do we address this issue? Y'all stay with me. How do we address the issue? And I go, I go from form to form and I keep hearing people say, well, the, the, the city council must do better. Let's fire the mayor or let's fire the police chief because crime is high. Wait a minute. The mayor isn't robbing you. I mean, these politicians can't make it hard for us to live. The by the way, they, 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 they legislate, they can make it hard. They get rich, but we get poor. And what I'm suggesting to you that it is not solely their responsibility. But if God gave you someone to nurture, it becomes your responsibility, not the teachers, not the principals. It's your responsibility from God to nurture your child, to teach them right from wrong, to let them know what is good behavior and what is bad behavior and not keep rewarding bad behavior with a pair of Jordans and a pair of sneakers or some pants or a nice hairdo and they are losing their lives every day and most of them, some of them won't even expect to live to be 21. I know this is tight today. Y'all gonna get mad at me. Y'all gonna get mad at me. But I'm gonna kill a few demons in our community. I'm gonna kill a few demons in our community. Because we gotta stop this foolishness. It's not our sons and daughters' fault by themselves. We just didn't teach them what morality was. Yes, sir. No, ma'am. Respect your elders. Open a door for a woman. Respect the women. Honor them. Make sure you love God. And all our churches want to do is who has the most members. I'm tired of our churches. I'm tired of our pastors. All we want to do is compete with each other on who is doing the most branding. Who the hell cares about branding the church and we don't brand Jesus? I'm tired of it. I'm tired of our women and men suffering. I'm tired of us coming to church, but we don't know anything about Jesus, but everything about the brand. I can't 
can't breathe. I can't breathe when my sisters and brothers are losing their lives prematurely. I can't breathe when we are so caught on stimulus checks we don't want to work a job. I can't breathe. I can't breathe when the church has become like the world. I shouldn't have to hide who I am when I come here. I ought to come here being able to show y'all I'm broken today. I'm not at my best today. I didn't cross every T yesterday. I didn't dot every I yesterday. But here I am. I'm still made in the image of God. Can you help me see God clearer? I can't breathe. Y'all sit down for a minute. I'm, I'm getting two more minutes. minutes. People have sucked the life out of you. Events have interrupted your flow of breathing because we have not interpreted them correctly nor trusted God in the process. I'm glad I am not who I was 10 years ago. I'm glad I am not who I was five months ago. I'm glad I am more than I was yesterday. How in the world can you live 24 hours and not in some aspect get better? I love our people. I love people, period. But we must wake up. We must wake up. We live in America, one of the most abusive countries in the world, but yet one of the most accomplished countries that give you opportunities if you get the right support and help. I can't speak negative of our country because look at where I am. I'm blessed. You're blessed, but it doesn't mean a blessed individual doesn't have some flaws. I can't breathe. At death, the body returns to the dust, and the spirit, the rock, returns to God. The soul simply ceases to exist when the breath has been interrupted. I submit to you, whether you a parishioner or pastor, whether you're a statistician or physician, I submit to you that a life with God is much better than a life without God. As I try to bring this to some type of conclusion, Life is metaphorically about inhaling and exhaling. We inhale oxygen and we breathe out carbon dioxide. Psalm 150 verse six says, let everything that had breath. That's the commandment. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Ask yourself, am I breathing? Am I breathing? Then my first obligation should be to praise God. <laughs> okay. Oh, God help me. Why? Why should that be the first thing I do? Because the Bible says let everything that has breath praise me first. Because when you praise them, everything comes after that. Everything comes after that. You are able to put in the right perspective. You ought not get a wife until you know God. Let me say this again. You ought not get a husband. You ought not get a wife until you know God. Until you know God, you don't know how to love and forgive. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry, y'all help me. Y'all help me. Are you breathing? Inhale means life. Exhale means that I'm getting rid of some junk as well as executing God's divine plan. We need to naturally breathe in order to naturally love because I've learned what's true in the natural 
is also true in the spiritual. That if you can't share or give, Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. We think that's all about money. That's not just about money. God loves a cheerful giver. It isn't about money. It's about giving the essence away of his beauty, of God's majesty, of God's forgiveness in your life, of God's wholeness, of God's second chance, giving to other people what God has given to you. Upreach, inreach, outreach. How do you breathe? How do you inhale? You inhale by his word. When you study his word, when you pray, you are inhaling. When you listen to God, you are inhaling. You, when you are actively engaged in worship, you are inhaling. And we breathe out when we obey what God just said. Church, as I close, I hope I didn't get you too mad at me today, but if I did, it's all right. Love covers a multitude of sins. I'm not angry at you. I'm angry at me. I'm angry at what we allow to happen. I'm angry at the fact that we're sitting in church week after week and people still aren't growing. They know church. They just don't know Jesus. They love events, but they just don't know how to experience the omnipotent power of of God. I, I learned some things, and I, I promise you, I'm, I'm almost there. Um, I learned some things. When I was younger, I, um, my first car, my parents made me get a job. No, she made me get a job. Okay, if you don't know my story, I'm Peggy will tell you. My mom made me work, and I'm Peggy made my cousin Jimmy, we cut grass every weekend, whether we wanted to or not. And it wasn't our yard. We, they made no. They made us get up early in the morning to go cut grass to make some money. Because they understood if I bless you with everything, you will see no need to maximize your own level of strength to stand on your feet. My mom, my mom took all my money every time I cut grass. I go home. How much you make? I should have been, I should have lied. I should have just lied. I should have just lied. I ain't never thinking about, I lied about everything else. <laughs> I did, I lied about everything. I don't know why I didn't lie about how much money I made, but I just felt like she, she got, I, I, she feeding me. So I gave her all my money. I, you know, I, I make some time, I'll make like $15 a day. Saturday, $15. You can, I mean, come on now. Penny candy, 25 cent. If you had a quarter, you could buy a pocket full of candy. You could go, I mean, all your teeth will fall out. <laughs> Y'all live in a generation now, it, 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 it's, a, it, it's two dollars for now laters. No, no, now laters, y'all know what now laters, y'all know what now. I mean, my God, my God, ain't no more penny candy. But mom made me work. When I got a car after high school, they made me work and say, you got to put tires on your car so make enough money to sustain the blessing we gave. Y'all just missed that. Y'all just missed that. But as time went on, I saw my tires wearing out. So I went and got a new pair, set of tires. I got a new set of tires. I put tires on the front. Forget the back. I put tires on the two tires on the, I can't get four at one time. I had two. Two on the front. Two tires on the front. That's where, that's, that's what I saw. The thread was wearing down a little quicker in the front. I put new tires on. Then the same thing started happening months later. I thought, I can't keep buying these tires. I take my car to the shop. Pep boys back then, they, pep boys. I got a pep boy. Pep boys told me, it's not your tires, it's your alignment. The reason you're tires are wearing out is you're putting on tires on a car that needs to be an alignment because the alignment is causing your tires to wear out faster and if you keep putting tires on a car that is out of alignment you're hurting your tires and hurting your chances to keep on living and long life from your tire. I want you to hear me today because some of y'all keep putting on things. It's not the things you're putting on that's wearing out quicker. It's your alignment. You gotta get some stuff on the inside 
eyes straight. You got to get some stuff on the inside corrected. It's your alignment. It's not your tires. It's your alignment. And your alignment will have your car pulling to the right or pulling to the left, but never able to be straight. I'm going home, Donald. I'm going home. I'm going somewhere. I close. I promise you I'm closing. Notice what God gave Adam before he gave Adam a woman. He gave Adam a breath. A spirit. Before God gave Adam responsibilities, he gave Adam the Ruach, the spirit, the breath. Before God gave Adam dominion over the earth to name whatever he had saw in front of him, God gave him Ruach, the spirit. You can't name things right until you have the Ruach. Spirit. I know if I, I, know if I, I bored you today. Some of you are looking at me like, Pastor, please hurry up. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm just old school. Ain't nothing between you and the door but air. I just had to say it. But I need you to hear this. You are wonderfully and fearfully made. And God cares about your future. That's why the song says, I need thee every hour most gracious lord no tender voice like thine can peace afford i need thee every hour stay thou nearby temptations lose their power when thou art nigh i need thee every hour in joy or pain Come quickly and abide, or life is vain. I need thee every hour, most holy one. Oh, make me thine indeed, thou blessed son. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. Then it says, oh, bless me now my savior I come I come I come to thee